everyone, Richard Carlton. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm here with Jacob Taylor, who's off his slice. He's in a signed slice. Stay in your slice. I am on my slice. On his slice. So welcome to another day of FMTraining.tv, where every day we're covering compelling topics, generally, um, in the FileMaker platform, 1 o'clock Pacific time. And uh, this weekend's a time change. So for those of you who are overseas somewhere, or you're on a different planet, for those of you tuning in from Mars, uh, just a reminder, the time zone will change. So we'll be either ahead, an hour ahead, or an hour behind. Uh, NJ from Australia, we're going to lose him because the hour change will screw him up enough that he can't actually get out of bed to see us. And we do appreciate it when he's here. We greatly appreciate all the feedback. This channel and the live stream we do is all because we have great interaction, great feedback from the people who use the FileMaker platform. They're using our training. We really, really, really appreciate what you do and your contributions. And so... Like the other day, Brutterman the cat, meow, little cat's typing on the keyboard, sent us suggestions. He's here, or the cat's here, someone's here uh, on the live stream uh, talking on Discord and had suggestions about some topics for Nick to do. I thought it was pretty great. So uh, he wrote it up in such a way, and we're like, oh, he, actually what it was, he, he was asking for some UI layout samples for iPhones, right? Specifically, now iPhones is kind of a funny topic. We don't actually, a lot of people say, oh, I want to mobile app on my iPhone, but then the reality is is that they get it, and they realize the screen's so small, and if they had an iPad, they could do so much more. So it's kind of this weird kind of, I want it, but then I don't want it kind of thing that goes on. But we haven't talked about uh, iPhone uh, phone style size layouts in a while, so we uh, tossed that on the Nick. Hopefully he will get that in the schedule, Margaret. I don't know if you saw that conversation or not, but that's it would be a probably a two or three day conversation on that pretty seriously with the Nick side. So let me cover the upcoming uh, news and things like that first. Uh, we'll de-slice uh, Jacob briefly. So today we're talking about file maintenance. Uh, uh, it's file maintenance, compressed copies, recover command, things like that. These, this is a topic that really is a to I'm on my little slice over here. Uh, it's a topic that comes up periodically, and it's always people who miss the topic or they forget about the topic, and then they're like, hey, what about this? So we're going to kind of cover this again. Every, about every six months, we need to you know, kind of touch this one because everyone who's doing a lot of FileMaker development should kind of know the rules of the road and how to handle emergencies properly. So when you're in your aircraft and you're flying and the right engine catches fire, what is the procedures for that, right? You just don't say, huh, screw it, and let's just keep going. You know, you're driving it like you stole it. There are people who treat their FileMaker server like a stolen car that they stole. They abuse it. They trash it. They literally, they drive their FileMaker server like they stole it. And then we get them calling us from jail uh, saying, hey, I wrecked my server because I crashed it 800 times and now it doesn't work anymore. And I'm like, uh, yeah. So part of this conversation is to help those who want to help themselves. If you're one of the people who likes to crash it on purpose and not follow the procedures, then uh, I'm not sure how much we can help you. So, Monday, super op optimization with Nick. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm sure it will be amazing. Nick is an awesome guy. We got drag and drop uh, with monkey spread plug-in on Tuesday. That'll be good. Christian Schmidt. Wednesday, Nick Hunter will be back with super optimization day two. So, uh, there was an audible call on Monday because I've got to be out of the office and I won't be around, and uh, Nick will cover up on that. But then what we're arranging is a one-week detailed kind of deep dive that's coming up. It's not on the schedule here yet. You can't see it, but it's coming up. It's a deep dive on taking your iPhone application. Like, remember we did the live code where we build the Android app and we, we submit the, the Google Store and that all happened with the live code people. We're going to do the same thing with Hansa from 24U, 24U, and he has a process to make the live code uh, FIAS, FileMaker iOS App SDK. It's an acronym that Claris Marketing explicitly told me that <laughs> they didn't like, and I uh, so I, I, I can't help that. So it's the FileMaker iOS App SDK uh, because it's FileMaker and it's iOS. I don't know what how well else to call it, but that's technically the name. So it's called FIAS, F-I-A-S. And it's been, we've been kind of, you know, we haven't done too much with it lately, uh, just because people always say, hey, I want to do this, and then they realize how much work it is, and they're like, oh, I don't want to, it's like QuickBooks. I love QuickBooks, let me do QuickBooks. Then, they, then they're like, oh, it's going to take at least a week of solid programming work to make it go. I mean, everyone says, oh, I can do it in a day or two. That's bullshit, right? By, to really integrate it, to understand it, it's at least a week of work. And people are like, ah, right? So 
the Fire stuff's the same way. But if you want to have an app in the Apple App Store, you should pay attention to this. Very important conversation. Uh, the Nick is going to try to get it horizontal with pivot tables. So uh, I don't know what he's planning on doing because pivot tables are fundamentally technical, right? Kind of like technical and people use SQL and other stuff. And, and Nick is allergic to SQL. Nick, if you're there, is he still there? Or did he drop off? Is he still there in Discord? Oh, he is there. Yeah, so uh, so that'll be interesting um, on that. If he can, if he's gonna have to do some SQL or some nastiness, it'll be it'll be nasty, as Nick says. It's nasty, right? And then uh, and then Friday, uh, March 18th, um, piercing firewalls with FileMaker servers, multiple machine configuration with Jacob Taylor. This yep. is stuff that's not documented. It this content doesn't exist anywhere else. It's only we had to. Uh, actually send an email to senior people at Claris and say, hey, we, we don't, this documentation doesn't exist. What do we do? How do we do it? And they like send these like internal notes to us on, on <laughs> and we're like, okay, we're really glad you, you gave it to us. Thank you for that. Uh, I was very nice and uh, thankful for them telling me that there's a secret file exists with some amazing configuration uh, settings in it that you can twiddle. And so we're going to demo that Friday. Yes. Um, so for yeah. Uh, it's, it's what it's, it's, how, it's how you set up multiple multiple web direct workers mm -hmm. uh, where like the filemaker server is sequestered in its own little part of the network mm. and isn't isn't mm. is not generally accessible mm. so the other one that's going to come up is it's another non documented area and then Han, uh, Hansa gave me this the other day uh, the ones that he's collected but when you uh, open up FileMaker on your Mac or Windows computer you can have a, a secret hidden configuration file and if you put hidden secret little nuggets not published anywhere into that configuration file you can make your FileMaker Pro do different stuff right there's a whole arsenal of secret bullets and guns and weapons and cool shit in the FileMaker platform and they didn't tell us about it so we've been slowly extracting the data out of them and uh, we're going to have another, uh, we're going to do another one on that one, Jacob. And remember that, Pete, we were talking about that. I'm going to talk to Rick about it a little bit and say, hey, you know, Sweet. we need to talk about this. Yeah. Um, and so, and then we are kind of slowly cartwheeling towards the next release of FileMaker. FileMaker release codenamed Area 51. We've codenamed it Area 51 because it is extremely amazing, stealthy, and also it's, huge. it's scary. Um, yeah. It's not. It's, it's none of the new engine stuff. It's just. It's just. It's actually incremental improvements to the existing platform, existing tools. J. W. J. Warner feels like happy hour. Yeah. Well, it kind of is, but we're. It's listen. I see stuff all the time that you folks don't see, and so I'm trying to like bruh, barf it up to you and help you and give you kind of insight of what's going on. So Claris is actually working on a major release of their product. It really should be called. It'd be, it'd be like the you know like 19.3 was like a major thing. And then 19.4 was like treading water. It's like your golden retriever going in circles, treading water in the pool. You're like, eh, whatever. 19.5, assuming they still call it that, Area 51 release is one that'll be really cool, but we're going to want to sit and watch for a little bit, especially if you have like a production uh, system. You it's, don't want your shit to catch fire, right? So Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it when it comes out, but the foreshadowing is they're doing a lot of really, really cool stuff all over the place. Uh, you know, maintenance improvements, paying down, I'm going to call it 30 years of, you know, code debt and stuff like that. Technical debt, so, yes. As a, as a general thing, amazing. I have no objections to it. But as always, when you change that much stuff in that many places, it makes people who've been in it for 30 years a little nervous. And yeah. so yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to tell you all about it when it comes out, um, but it'll be a little bit of a wait and see as far as our specific recommendations go. Well, to roll out, like I won't say, yeah, Ken... Hot air balloon can immediately roll it out and good luck. Kyle Williams, roll it out to all your live customers. Like, okay. Yep. No. By the way, so real quick, as a reminder, I'm going to say this. As a reminder, if you want to support the channel, definitely check out the uh, FileMaker uh, annual training subscriptions that we have, Learning FileMaker annual training subscriptions. Complete training. It's awesome. You definitely want the complete bundle here. We actually even have a two-year bundle if you want that. If you'd like to get a coupon for the training, you want to get in on this. Um, uh, email us support at RC Consulting. We can send you the coupon support at rcconsulting.com. Say, hey, I'd like a coupon to buy the complete training. Uh, in the training is the certification training. 
we're going to start probably fairly soon probably once a week we're going to do kind of a uh, it's, it'll be invite only for the people who are part of this right and it, if you have the complete training we will invite you in and we will spend time uh, answering specific questions that you have about the certification training or potentially other topics as well um, because really these people here are helping support the channel so they should have a higher level of premium access uh, and to get their certification done so once again we're hoping uh, we had one person get, uh, that I know about officially told us that they got did our training, got the certification, and then the next one is Larry. All right, so let's talk about uh, the topic at hand today. It's a little bit low, slow in coming, but kind of a little bit of upfront news, kind of foreshadowing as to what's coming. Um, and because it's under NDA, technically, we really can't dig into it too much with you. Um, although Claris really, it's not that big of a secret. I think what Claris is trying to keep a secret is all their like 20 stuff, right? Their FileMaker 20 stuff, which we have still yet to see. So they talk about it, and the last time they talked about it was... I, yeah, I was going to say they have not, in fact, continued with the... Dialogue. The on talking it. sessions. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> they, it was September, then a little bit, end of October, first week of November, and then it's that, that's the sound of the, the bubble of communication popping. Yeah. That's the popped, and now there is the right. and and we had heard with it, you know, hopeful for January, February, maybe something toy early. Well, to be early, clear, a couple of the other March, developers, so. couple of the other developers are playing with it, but they're they've been uh. underwhelmed, right? So it's not far enough along where they're showing it beyond uh, that group. So today we're talking about file maintenance. So I'm going to move myself over to a little micro micro uh, micro section. And then Jacob has to be in a super duper micro section. So this is the file maintenance right here. So we're talking about uh, the idea of file maintenance and, and, and what you need with file maintenance. So up front, let me just say that as a general rule, if you follow our recommendation, and some of you here are new, some of you here are new. Hey, right, welcome uh, Michael Kerwan. And uh, yeah, you guys are great. Um, if you are, Okay, let's start with this. As a general rule, you will never need file maintenance, and what file maintenance goes on will be automatic and, and beyond. You, you won't notice it, generally, as a rule. Uh, that is if you follow our recommendations that we've talked about here over and over and over, and the recommendations are fundamentally that you have lots of backups, uh, and whenever you have a crash, you restore to a backup. Last night, last night at yesterday at 3 Pacific time, three, was it? 3.45. 3.45 yeah. or so. Our main Amazon EC2 EC2 server that runs all of RCC Corporation. It helps fill out videos to you folks. It runs part of the website. It blew up, and it gave a really bizarre error. We haven't had a really gnarly crash on a FileMaker server like that, at least on our internal stuff in two years. So pretty reliable. But when it went down, it went down pretty awesome. It took a restart of the Windows. You didn't restart the EC2 instance. You just restarted. I did, the, yeah. You did. Yep. Okay. We couldn't so, get. Yeah, FileMaker server wouldn't behave. Yeah. So, so it was a not only a, a Windows operating uh, Windows OS restart, but we restarted the inst. Well, we restarted the instance, which is the Windows OS. Yeah. So. Windows. Yep. Yeah, and then we ran updates while we we're at it and got it all taken care of. But it's pretty rare. Now, what did we do? In uh, after it cr it crashed, we brought it back up. It seems like it might work. But we set the FileMaker server to not auto start, correct, Jacob Taylor? You want to just verbally That's walk correct. us through that briefly? Yeah. So uh, before, so we we had our event. Uh, we'll call it the the crash event in this case. We'll call it that. Um, the first thing that I did, and is the first thing that I always do, is to go and look at the FileMaker server event log and confirm what the server thinks is true. Um, so in this particular case, it was it's some kind of a weird bug probably in the platform. So it, you know we don't need to talk about too much what the actual issue was per se, um, but it is it was a surprise file closure event. Now that was important because I could go into the event log and verify I had a closing and a file closed entry for each open database on the server. Mm -hmm. That means I can use the live data afterwards. The, if you the, the, the do the, not see that. Yeah, you cannot. The databases, cannot. the databases that were in the FileMaker server folder. So the FileMaker server folder, then there is a data folder, and then there's a databases folder, and there are the live files. Normally, when you crash, those files are are wrecked, 
Yep. We had the crash we had was kind of not a really like instant blue screen of death. It was kind of this sloppy. It actually reported that the license key had expired and it shut itself off. And so it was a bizarre thing because our license, not, our, my annual not, license yeah. is due in June. So clearly we're not there yet. We're like, what the hell? And so, so it wasn't a crash in so much it wrecked the files, but it wouldn't come back up. And so we didn't have to restore from the backup. But normally, normally, if you look at 100 crashes, 97% of them are going to be restored from the backup, almost always. Yep. And so you go to the last good backup, and if, and then you take the the live files that were there, you maybe zip them up, keep them. Maybe there's something you need. That's why you run backups every 15, 20, 30 minutes, no no more, no well, greater than an hour away because – if if it's you know if you back up at the top of the hour and then 28 minutes later it crashes maybe you lose 28 minutes of data if it you know and and but you, you really need to use the backup you don't want to use the uh, the crash files if you're a person that uses crash files then today's conversation is for you now strictly speaking if you ran a filemaker file on a server for 10 years and you never crashed it and did anything you might need this a little bit it's an outlier every once in a while you can have a bug in FileMaker that caused a little bit of a corruption problem. It's pretty rare. If you follow the rules, if you don't speed drunk driving while your seatbelt's off, most of the time you're never going to get pulled over by the cops. But if you're drunk, you go 100 miles an hour in a, in a school zone without a seatbelt, it's just bad. And we have people who do that. So let's talk about this a little bit today. So the first thing I want to mention is a consistency check. These happen all the time. They're automatic. They're behind the scenes. Whenever you open a FileMaker file locally, let's start locally, on your local computer, it's going to run a consistency check. It's basically checking a bunch of checksums for those of you who are programmers, looking to make sure that it, it was closed properly. And if it wasn't closed properly, then it's going to do a little bit of a, a limited inspection, right? Kind of like if you have an oil change in your car, your mechanic, and you go someplace to do it, they're going to do a cursory check, check a couple things, change the oil, but it's a pretty lightweight inspection. Right, Jacob? It's a pretty light. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So as you can it, see. It, 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 the only thing that it will get, basically all the consistency check gives you is a is a thumbs up, thumbs down on whether, yeah, right there. And it's, it's two things. There it <laughs> yeah, is. It, it's essentially like. You know, do, does the structure of the file look like somebody beat it up with a baseball bat? If not, we're good to go. That's it. It's it's like, it's it's not it's not deep. It's not going to tell you anything about the data. Um, you know, just very very simple and quick check. Yeah, so. the first first part of the check is was the file closed correctly because it's doing this on open as a general rule. Sometimes it'll do a consistency check. So on server. So say most of us operate on the server. We put the files on the server. Um, when you open the file on the server, it does a, it generally does a check on the file consistency check, um, and and some and when you close the file, sometimes it'll do maintenance and other checks like that on it. But as a general rule, if it's running on the server and you open the file up, there won't be a consistency check because it was already consistent on the server, and the server is going to shoot down the data you need, so it doesn't do it at that yep. point. So primarily, the other, go, go ahead. Just, the other specific time it does a consistency check, if you use Pro to share a file with the server, like you're uploading it, that's, oh, it'll, it'll it, will, do it. it will do a pre-flight check at that point. Yeah, after you've like, you, you go in, you set your host, you set your admin console credentials, do all that stuff, and you're like, all right, I'm ready to go. It will, you know, when you drop the file on and hit go, it will immediately do a consistency check and it'll spit out the any output there's usually isn't any unless the file was crashed yeah uh, you're gonna get put the output out right next to the database yeah you're gonna get a log file from filemaker on that uh typically when you open a file that wasn't uh uh done correctly yeah. you'll get a i don't do they, they actually call it a consistency check it's, i could yes it is so so one yes it is, I could it try is a it here. Let me try check it. and then also it is uh it is recover.log even though it's not a full recover or oh is like it that. it's it is yeah. a recover it, they do call it recover.log okay good yep. so i'm in a copy of starting point um and i've got a recover i'm going to call it recover i'm going to call it pre-show i did this before the show started i'm actually going to force quit filemaker right here which then if you did this you wouldn't want to use this file because it potentially could be damaged so then if I open the file again, it's going to say, oh, if I wasn't closed correctly, let me run a consistency check. Let's see what it reports back. Double click it. And there it goes. It's going to open it up. It was able to open it. 
and that's and, and that's the thing right and then there's this recover log and so what does it do it says doo, 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 it says the file was not closed properly let me check very preliminary check very limited check and it kind of looks okay right it didn't it, you know it's pretty minimal Mark right free but not in free list yeah it did, yeah. It, did it did a does the number equal the other number yes no if no you know reset the number it doesn't fix the number. mark free is not up. free in list i don't know what that is that's a it probably blocks free or something like that would be my mm -hmm. guess so yeah some so 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 this is this is what people do they do this and they're like ah the file's great just keep doing it and so they keep doing this and doing this and do this until the day where it won't open or uh i don't know a couple months ago we showed you where we did uh the file came up and it said the file type was unknown in the field definitions, right? Yeah. It was a text field or number field. Oh, that was ugly. It was unknown. And that was one of these customers that literally, they, they drive their FileMaker server like they stole a car, and they're, and it's like the news, the news is chased, the police are chasing them, the news copters are chasing them, it's the freeway chase, it's the, it's the current popular sport in a lot of metropolitan cities, at least the United States. Um, and so, yeah, it's a big car chase and gunfights and the whole thing, right? So, yeah. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the people just love that, right? So it's like if it, if, if it's a car chase, they love it. So uh, so that's what you have. It's the results of the of the car chase. Nothing too exciting. So back to my PowerPoint right here. So so let's say for example, so compacted copy. Let's talk about that, right? What is a compacted copy? Well, why do we care about it? So compacted copy is generally. Uh, a, a kind of a light, I would say, a lightweight recover. It basically does more heavy-duty maintenance on the file. It's designed to be non-destructive, right? Um, a lot of times you can fix issues with the compacted copy. It removes blocks. It basically, hard to explain this in, in kind of basic layman's terms, but imagine FileMaker file is a big block of cheese, right? So I like cheese. I like cheese probably too much. So here's a block of cheese, and if you had cheddar cheese or something like that, it's a big block of cheese. But if you know Swiss cheese, it's got holes in it, right? And so if your FileMaker file, imagine your FileMaker file is starts off as cheddar cheese, and as you start to use it, um, it starts to get holes in it. And the holes are basically areas where there's data, uh, there's empty blocks or empty space inside the FileMaker file. So the FileMaker file gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of that might be data. Some of it might just be empty Swiss whole cheese in the in the file. It's normal. It's expected, but it's a little oversized. So if you could kind of reconstitute that cheese and get rid of the space, it would be smaller. So the so compacted copy is designed to get rid of the extra space internally that's wasted. Um, and basically does some other maintenance as well, right? So, mm -hmm. and you can see the conversation right here. Yeah. Um, and so you can do, to do a compacted copy, you have to have the file file open. You have to have the file locally running on your uh, Mac or Windows computer. Uh, it doesn't do this on the server. You don't do it, uh, Correct. for all practical purposes, you don't do a compacted copy on the server. So, um, mm -hmm. And so you have that. So if you go, if we open the FileMaker file here, we want to do it real quick. Uh, leave Jacob's face in the way. I'll say uh, save a copy as, right? Save a copy as. So this menu right here, if you're accessing a hosted file, a hosted file that's on a server, for security reasons, for security reasons, I'll say it again, for security reasons, this will not be illuminated, okay? Because you don't want Joe Schmo opening up your file and then peeling off a copy off the server and doing it locally. This absolutely could be programmed to work, but it's a security thing, it's disabled, okay? So the file's running locally, save a copy as, and it's gonna say, what would you like, right? What would you like to see right here, what right? Kind of copy. A copy of the current copy of the file. I have no idea, I've almost almost never used that. So compressed, duplicate. Yeah, yeah. compressed copy is smaller and does some maintenance. A clone is very therapeutic, but it, it blows up all the data. So the results of a compacted copy are essentially the same file you have with the schema and the structure and the data, right? And then this right here is a, a highly sanitized file where they, it removes all the, all the data, all the, all the data entry data, all the records, right? But the layouts are there, the scheme is there, the scripts are there. This is a very therapeutic process to run a clone of a file. It resets the file. It does a lot of great things to it. 
Um, it's like going on a diet and, and cleaning, you know, cleansing yourself out or whatever. It's a it's a good thing. Um, Spending a year on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then then you have a uh, a self contained copy. This I'm just going to mention this right here. It's not really part of the conversation. It's where it takes all the external uh, external container data and it rolls it back into internally into the file, right? And the reason you might do this is if you wanted to take a copy and stick it on locally on an I, iOS device uh, with FileMaker Go. Local files in FileMaker Go do not support external container data. I'm going to say that again. Let everyone listen. A local file. So here's my iPhone. If I have the file, you can't see me though. Let me zoom out. Here we go. My FileMaker. If I'm going to take a FileMaker file here and I want to put it locally, locally on here, not not acting as a server, but locally on here. If I if I was able to upload the file and the folder of external images, it doesn't support that. The images on a local file in containers or PDFs or whatever they are have to be within the file structure. That's a certification test question. Okay, and so one way to kind of prep the file, I guess you could go into field definitions and set all the containers back to internal then let it chew on it the alternative is to run this right here which creates a one-off copy where it's loaded all of it back in the one file then you could put that on your device so that's not really what we're talking about today but it's here so I've mentioned it so the only one that we really care about today is compacted copy the clone is interesting really kind of a different conversation so so say you do a compacted copy and the file is still doing funky things there's a reason that you would run, I guess, let me ask the question, Jacob Taylor, so you can talk a little bit. I can drink. Why Why might someone run a compacted copy, and at what point might they consider a recover, recovery process, which is the next step more advanced than the compacted copy? So... One one of the one of the times we have done compacted copies, for example, is where a filemaker file is, uh, for lack of a more technical description, the wrong size. Um, that's the that's the best way to describe it. So you've got your database. It's up. You know, we'll say it's up on a server or something like that. Um, you're you're plucking along, putting your record data into it. Maybe you've got some external containers, right? And and you're absolutely confident all of those containers are external uh, you know they were migrated out a long time ago etc but you know you're you're whatever you're adding data here and there but it's just record data right you, you know all the you know you can even look in the container data outside of the file and say oh yeah like every time somebody uploads a document we get another file in there yeah, perfect so everything looks like it's functioning correctly but weirdly um, you're getting a similar amount of space for example or even more uh, in the FMP12 file, which doesn't make any sense because somebody adds one record, you know, it's maybe 30 or 50 fields or something like that, and then a pointer out to the, the document that's stored somewhere. Um, and so you can't come up with a really good explanation for why the file is expanding in size because, you know, record data is just text for the most part, and so it doesn't take up that much space. Um, and so one of the things that you can start with actually is to grab a copy of that file or take it down off the server because you probably want to do it with a live copy um, and run a compacted copy and see if that helps. Uh, that's that's the compacted copy is essentially what it started off being back in FileMaker 2. It goes all the way back to FileMaker 2. Um, also, if you have a file that is misbehaving, um, for example, you get to a layout and when you visit a certain layout, it crashes or you print a layout it crashes or if you run a certain script it crashes the first thing you want to do is you want to make a compressed copy and see if that corrects the problem if that doesn't correct the problem for some reason then you want to run the recover command and the recover command I guess we should I mean I'll let me bring it up here in the slideshow I'll, real quick I'll, okay. I'll say another it's it's kind of a linked example so uh, and and it's a I'll, I'll say it this way because I actually don't have too many issues with Pro like crashing outright even when there's something really messed up on a layout anymore. Um, that's a that's a positive statement. It's a credit to to some of the cleanup work Claris has done actually. So if you go into a layout and it's not specific to the record or something like that, you don't have 
I don't know, a related table of a million records that you're trying to sort and filter or something like that, and it's just slow going in um, or stuff like that, you might consider some of this maintenance stuff as well. Um, again, a lot of the a lot of the things that used to literally crash Pro um, don't. They just make it horrifically slow, um, and that's your bing, 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 I need to, I need to consider additional actions here. Yep. Um, little light bulb should be going off. So, yeah, that's one of the things that we can look at. So, uh, so here you can see from the recovery, I'm just going to kind of summarize it. FileMaker uh, Pro consistency check automatically. You can choose. So, so basically the recover has a lot of options that of what it does. It can do some very minimal. In fact, a recover, a, a, a recover command can run at the lightest, the lightest, lightest, the lightweightest, the lightest lightweight thing it can do. I'm trying to say that. Um, well, it's easier for me to show you. So let me just. Uh, so first off, if you're going to do the recover, you, the file can't be open. When we did the save as a compressed copy, the file had to be open. So I'm going to open up FileMaker Pro right here. The, no files are open. I'm going to say, uh, let's say we do a recover command. I'm going to identify a copy of starting point. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, on my desktop. And here it is right here, and I'm going to, uh, we can say it just to do a consistency check, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, and it's going to say, I'm going to do a recover, and you want to give it, like, and whatever I do a recover, I might put it recover number one or something like that. And then what you're going to do is say advanced options right here. So here's the advanced options. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I saw my screen flash. There may be a question. Let me get to it momentarily. So here are the options that we have. Jacob's got a beautiful large face. Um, and then there's the recover. So recover allows you to generate a new database from a damaged one and optionally rebuild the schema and structure. So optionally rebuild. Recover may not be able to rebuild all of a severely damaged file. True. If problems are found during recovery, you should only use the recover database to extract recent work. This is kind of like their legal law, legal department sentence right here. I have a different sentence that we can go back to. It's a little bit more. Their tone is moderated over the last year or two on this a little bit, which is kind of nice. So what we do is we say, generate a new file, and the most uh, the most aggressive of the three is this bottom one. So copy file block as is. So that's just a file copy. This is a logical structure copy, same as compacted. So if we press this button right here and turn these things off, we're effectively performing a, comp a compacted copy. So it's like there's more than one way to do a compacted copy. But what we do is we turn up the intensity here. Intensity is higher. We turn on these options. Scan records, rebuild fields and schema as necessary. Scan, rebuild scripts and structure as necessary. Rebuild indexes. So you do a fine. This is not horrifically uncommon. I hear about this every couple months. I, I do a find in my database. I don't find the records. Okay, most of the time that's the user not you or the user not knowing what you're doing or not being sufficiently careful. Even for me, I have to go back and really, really, really check to make sure that my find isn't working correctly. And if I can absolutely be sure that the find isn't working correctly, then the index is damaged. You can tell it to rebuild the indexes on the file. And then it can delete some other cache settings, etc., things like that. These would be settings that you would have, like the sort order on the file and things like that, whatnot. Um, and then this is a bypass the startup script, um, etc., like that. So I don't normally turn that on, so you can run this. And if you tell it to run, the file, oh, is it locked or in use? I thought I had it. Was it, is it not? It oh, it's, it's hiding. Ah, try it again. Recover. So nothing like looking... Dumb. Here it is right here. Select. Specify so advanced options. All the options are on. Recovered file. We'll call it. Well, there's. Yeah, so this will be recovered you know, one. Yeah, you don't have gonna, another recovered already. Yeah, well, I, I practiced this earlier, so I was just making sure. So it's going to go, for those of you wondering about this, it's going to go through this little dialog here. It's not that big of a file, and it's going to do some processing. My computer's also live streaming and doing other stuff, so it has limits of horsepower, but it's checking the themes, checking the layouts, this and that and this and that. And this file actually has a boo-boo in it, right? If it if it if if it finds anything wrong, even if it fixes it. So right here it gives you this warning. Even if it fixes the problem, it's still gonna give you this warning. This is their law legal law department at Apple saying you should use the backup. Never use this. The reason we're going through this recovery command is for some reason you don't have a backup, right? I mean rule one is always use a backup. Rule two is you're investigating a problem or maybe you don't have a backup, in which case you've already 
messed up, and so we're trying to help you with that. But this will pop up even if it fixes the issues. So it, it's if we go to this description over here, special notes on recovery, I'm going to block Jacob on this one. It says, in general, I'm going to read this to everyone. In general, recovering a file sh uh, should be reserved for files that will not open or display index problems or, our, our Richard will say, are, are, or are otherwise obviously malfunctioning in a gross way. And, you, and it's not just that you suck at scripting, okay? Once again, I can't tell you, if I, 10 times I think I have a corrupted file, nine times those 10, it's I'm writing bad code and I'm, I lost the context, I did something wrong, and I screwed up, and it's my fault. So on that 10% of the time where it actually is FileMaker, I come in here and we go through this. So it says try to run a save a copy first. It's less invasive and will not and will not damage the file. If uh, if that doesn't work, it doesn't say that right here, but I'm going to insert that. If this doesn't work, try using the recover command. Then I'm going to pick up the sentence here. The recover command aggressively attempts to correct the file uh, um, so you can open it and recover your data. It, uh, to do this, recover processes uh, may delete, okay, so back up. It may delete uh, corrupted fields, layout, layout objects, basically anything that it finds uh, that's grossly insane. Like it finds a dead body in your file, it's going to get rid of it, okay? Or it might not get rid of it. It may mark it and tell you that it's a dead body and you should clean it up. And so you need to understand that if you have a heavily damaged FileMaker file, this isn't going to fix it. This FileMaker, this copy of starting point right here is actually kind of one of our master copies. This popped up the other day. Someone said, hey, have you run a recover on this? And I go, no. And so there's like a, there's a quick, there's a field in here, a QuickBooks field that's a little bit funky, and we don't use QuickBooks that terribly often. And so it's kind of slipped off our radar. So we're going to go in and fix this as part of our next release. We're going to look at these fields. We may have to delete the field and put the field back in is how you correct the issue. You don't copy and paste it. You delete it maybe save a clone of it again and then you go back and put that field in and restore that feature so if you have three minor issues in a file really the file is not trashed um, and so that's what it says attempts to correct it blah 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 uh, there are many conditions where uh, the returns uh, where you return incorrect find results including th this right here is basically says uh, there are many times where you might suck as a developer or as a user and, the, and you're getting bad results because you suck is what this says. Uh, the records might be unexpectedly deleted because of a misplaced script step or something that you did because you're not great, right? So even this happens to me. So it's warning you that just, you know, recovery should not be your first thing. You should try to establish that you made an error. And then if you can go through and kind of remove other things and get down to the point, like, like someone says to me, uh, it crashes when I get to this layout or I print when I get this layout. Well, then I, I, I go to that layout, I manually print, and it crashes. That's pretty concrete, okay? Does it crash on Mac, crash on Windows? Does it crash on another Mac, okay? But every time it crashes, you can't use that file. You need to go back. So as you do d testing, you need to make sure you're testing with a, a fresh copy, right? Yeah, so I'll, I'll cover this momentarily in a little bit. There's a conversation about damage detector with the DDR, which is, and that is not a comprehensive, uh, complete, 100% foolproof yeah. thing, right? Um, we're not that far yet. I, I will address that if we have time. We're running out of time. But, uh, uh, yeah, that's not, we're not, it's not there yet. Because to do that, you'd have the, have to have the, the XML version 2 Star Trek transporter fully, fully perfectly functioning. Um, so, so this is the note here that it says it's in general file, but, um, for this reason, you don't use command and do not use it. Do not use a recover command for regular maintenance. But it, it basically says here that it depends upon what your situation is, right? Uh, uh, and so, let me see one more. Let me go one more here. Slide. Recovering the files that walks through the process of this, etc. But the short version says is that it's not an automatic. You know, the, you know, if you come, if you come out of here and you're, and you're, it says the results say 3,485 items have been damaged and, and it's like, and it's like, it's like on the ship and the captain goes, engine room damage report. And the guy's face is bloody and says, Sh captain abandoned ship. Okay. That's, that's a bad clue. If you call down the engine room and he goes, yeah, someone spilled their coffee and we're cleaning it up. 
That's what this message is right here. You got three items that are modified. Right? Someone spilled the coffee on the control panel. It's down in the keyboard. We got to get the coffee and the sugary drink out of the keyboard on the Starship. Okay? It's disabled temporarily because, you know, it's minor. Somebody's, in there, minor. somebody's in there with the paper towels. Yeah, in there with the paper towels and they hit the wrong button. That's minor. But see, recovery, all recovery is, is you're calling the engine room for a damage report. That's all this is engine room damage report. And it comes back. So let's, so let's say that the engine room says, well, let me give you a readout of what happened. So I'm, I'm gonna, I ran a recovery earlier on this file. This is the same one. Um, uh, well, I could open this one here too. But what I want to do is show you when you open the recover log, it gives you this like long block of crap. And this can, and then like a copy of starting point. This can be really, if I scroll here, this can be really long and nasty. Yeah. And so what you want to do is you want to identify the problem. So you drag it over to FileMaker. And it will make. Oh, I'll head over here. Uh, let me drag that over to FileMaker. Doot, doot, doot. It says, "Would you like to create a copy of this in FileMaker?" And you're like, "Yeah, I import it. It's going to create the fields and import it." And so we got this table view over here, and it's got 5,600 records, right? Which really sucks, right? So I'm going to drag this out over here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so everyone can see this. And so error. So if you see error zero, that means no error in FileMaker. Anything else is an error. Okay. Now, uh, up front, remember we had the recovery over here. Uh, this one was the consistency check. So as you do more recovers or more compressed copies and things like that, right, um, it's going to uh, just keep appending it to the same log file, right? So then we say starting a recovery down here. So this is where the recovery starts down here. So what I want to do is do a find for zero. And then I want omit the zero. So all I want are the damage. I don't need because because it because this the recovery command, the log comes back. It's like <laughs> you call down the engine room and the and the and your Scotty, the engine room guy, comes this chief of engineering comes back and goes, Well, uh, this bolt is fine, this bolt is fine, this mouse is fine. He's gonna give you fifty six hundred or more. These things are fine, and then there's three broken things. <laughs> so the goal is to just give me the shit that's broke, right? So that's the whole idea. So here we go. So here is the, is I omitted the zero. So these are the things that are broke. Now, it doesn't tell you what it modified because when it does a modification, it's it's modifying the the record, the line entry right above it. So it writes a log entry, and then if it finds a problem, it writes an entry below it of what it's doing. So I'm going to click on this record. So we're focused on this record. I'm going to say uh show all records or find all records or whatever we do. I'm just going to do command J and then now here here it is right here. So here is the field called QuickBooks mode. It's there's something wrong with the field and so it's, it wrote these two these two log items here are are referring to the entry above the entry above. So what I need to do is check out and see if this field, what the issue is with it, inspect it, look at it, maybe delete it, whatever you want to do. Does that make sense, everyone? Questions about that? Yep. I don't see any at the moment. Okay, great. So, so that's how you solve this issue. Now, what you can do, uh, the, the thing is that file, uh, FileMaker, because, it's, because it reported back that we spilled the coffee on the keyboard in the engine room, not really a disaster. It might have cleaned up the coffee for us. So what you do, and this is how you do this, and people are like, oh my God, right? So this is how you solve this problem, yep. is that you take the recovered file here, uh, which is right here, and you run a recovery on the recovery. Not so much to like, uh, to like, you know, it didn't get it the first time. Let's see if we can get it the second time. It's mostly to give you a readout of the results of what it did. Recovery is like, you, hit an, you run through an asteroid, rocks are bouncing off the ship, you call the engine room, what's the problem? They say, spilled our coffee. Okay, well, if, if they said we spilled our coffee and we're attempting to clean up and then they hang up and you're up on the bridge going, well, sh can we go? Is it coffee cleaned up now? Is it cleaned up? They didn't tell you that. They didn't tell you whether they really fixed it or not. You've got to call the engine room again to get a readout. Right, so here we go. So I'm going to do the. I'm going to call the engine room again a second time. Uh, if I can open up, there it is. Finally, oh, you had there, it. I had it somewhere. 
Uh, and hopefully it's not open. So I'm going to tell it to do a recover. And I'm going to tell it to recover the recovered file. And once again, this is for me to confirm that they actually cleaned up the coffee. So I'm going to call it recovered two. So we had one, which is they reported we had spilled coffee. Go through the advanced options, give the same options again, go through it. Now, I don't know what this is going to do. It's either going to report the coffee's cleaned up or they can't clean up the coffee. Okay. I think I know the answer to this, but that's because I think I did this recover previously. <laughs> okay, could be. So I think it doesn't fix the two QB fields. Okay, which means that they're actually damaged and recovery can't fix it. So they spilled coffee in the controls, and we have to rip out the control panel in the engine room and replace it. Put a new keyboard in. Yeah, yep. correct. Okay, so it went from three items. Remember, there were three items of four. Now there's two items. So what this tells us is that the first recovery command fixed one item. The two other items require manual intervention. Require manual intervention. You're going to get the log file over here. You're going to find the two file, the fields, and we're going to have to delete those fields, right? Probably run a base elements to see where they're in use. Delete the field, maybe save a, uh, a compacted a clone of it, right? And then rebuild the fields. So that's what I have to do to fix this copy of starting point. So Labo 404 brings up uh, Geiss Interactive, a damage detector, okay? This is, the damage detector um, is kind of an interesting thing. Here's, here's the rub, and I'll just give you an update on this. So fundamentally, this damage detector, it doesn't matter what, they, what the proof guy says about this product. It's going to be incomplete. It will not give you a complete picture of the damage. Why? Because the, the XML version 1 that's been in the product for 20 years, it does not completely uh, render the file out in perfect fidelity. So the idea is that if you're in FileMaker, you're in a copy of FileMaker over here, I'm going to open up this starting point right here, doesn't matter. But I go up here and I say uh, tools, I go to developer, uh, or actually it's a database design report, yep. and I go through here and I say XML copy. This is the historic XML 1.0 technology. This is what base elements use and everything else. This right here is kind of a, a loose summary of what's in the file. It's a loose summary of what's in the file. It's not complete. It's not complete. So if you did, so if you have a tool that looks at XML 1.0 and gives you a damage report based upon it, well, it's doing a damage report based upon an incomplete uh, XML file. So, of course, down here, they don't say XML 2.0 or 1.0. That would make too much sense. They buried it up here at the top with a different name. You have to go up in here and you say, save a copy as XML. This is XML 2.0. This is the add-on creator. This is the, uh, the Star Trek transporter. This is supposed to, supposed to, supposed to create a perfect XML file it, it takes the molecules of the file, it rips them down to little elements in XML, and it's supposed to have perfect fidelity, and then you can suck those back into FileMaker and it rebuilds the file perfect fidelity. That's what it's supposed to do. It doesn't do that yet because Claris hasn't finished it. And they've been working on this since FileMaker 17, like five years, six years ago, and they've never finished it. And even in this new version of FileMaker that's coming up, they're working on it some more. But it's not done. Once it's done, you could take it'd be like a it'd be like a, a whole body scan. Like if you went through a Star Trek transport, you beamed all the molecules out, and you could run that through a filter to look for cancer. Or in Ken's case, Ken has a, a disposition towards hot air balloons, and say that's a defect. No one should like hot air that much. We're going to remove that. Okay. You could see any damage that's in there. That would be a comprehensive check on the system would be fantastic. It would be great. We can't wait for that. It's not in the product yet. So what they built is kind of a lightweight attempt at it, but it's not comprehensive. And because it's not comprehensive, I'm, I'm not going to use it. Once they have the XML version 2, I'm sure the Proof Guys people and probably five or ten other companies, including 360 Works, Monkey Bread, every other person who who's a good you know, third-party programmer is going to make their own version of the damage report cleaner thingy outer super recover thing, right? So does that makes yep. sense. I'm I'm that, throwing a lot of data. Yeah, 
I, I have specific advice too because I have clients who get uh, very excited about um, using tools like Damage Detector and Base Elements to try and find problems inside their files. And uh, I will only say, while I love the enthusiasm for that, uh, obviously, like file health is very important. Um, what I will tell you is you should do the compacted copy and or the recover first and then approach with those tools um, after you've already used, basically after you've already done the basics. Um, I have another client who I'm working with right now and they're doing some engineering on their file and that's great. And I'm basically waiting until they're done because it's more important that they, you know, build the features that they're working on in their file than to fix the, the there are known issues in the file basically. Um, and they think that their work will resolve that and we'll see. Um, but realistically, we're gonna do a big recover on the file here at some point. Um, and so after that, uh, yeah, then we'll begin, you know, hitting it with base elements, hitting it with damage detector and tools like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't, I, I, for them at least, I have no, no interest in doing this um, in advance of having done the compacted copy, in advance of having done a recover, um, those kind of basic built into the platform tools, so. So even my own senior engineers had lost track of that, uh, of some of this a little bit. So the recover command is you're calling the engine room and the engine room saying they've got these problems. And they are saying, attempting to fix the problems and then they hang up. Okay, the second recover that you do of the first file gives you, you call them back and you're saying, did you fix that shit? And they say, well, we fixed X, Y, Z, we didn't fix these things. And that's, at that point, that's what you know you have to manually remediate. You have to manually plan on fixing that. Um, and that's such an important thing. So Calvin the other day had this customer had pay, paid, we were, we, we had like $100,000 of work for this customer. And and they do this, this you know, something was funky, the find didn't work correctly, so we're going to run a recovery. They come back with like 13,000 problems. 13,000 problems and, and my engineer is losing his on the phone and I'm like Calvin just relax relax breathe <laughs> I said did it fix it or not he goes I don't understand I said run the recovery a second time to figure out what it didn't fix on the first pass that's the stuff you have to remediate he does that again it comes back with 13 things it of the 13,000 it fixed almost 99.9% .9 of them but it hadn't fixed the last three, 13 things, and Calvin goes, oh, I could fix those in an afternoon or something, right? So instead of this giant panic, because the recover will fix some stuff, um, and, I, and in this, this guy's case, I'm not sure what it was. The file was fine. It was just uh, they left the recovery, but the, the initial damage report was that we've been, we spilled coffee, and we've been spilling coffee for two years, and we never wiped it up was basically it, and so you got a hell of a mess, but generally the recovery in the case of this file here, it had three issues. It only fixed one. Most of the time, it fixes almost all of it. And at least, like, one or two things that you're just going to have to manually get out a shovel by hand, remediate yourself. Yeah. So you, so in that case, you would you would take the recovered one file, bring it over, call it new master, and then you would manually remediate that. Then after you're done remediating it, then you'd run through the recovery again to see if it's reporting problems, and it would come back with a clean bill of health. The one of the original impetuses actually for these was because uh, we have, uh, I suppose, a former senior engineer uh, who has thankfully retired because uh, he worked a good long life and is now done. Um, he, so I, I, again, this is the stuff is usually not necessary, and if you have not crashed your file or know that you've not crashed your file, there isn't usually a huge reason to like recover it or save a compacted copy Correct. or so, something like that. You know, in the absence of any evidence of a problem, right? Don't don't do anything. Um, he, he, I'll say for historic reasons, basically, it just seems to not be necessary much anymore. Um, would recommend people do stuff like this occasionally. And so what I will say is if you have an absolutely ancient FileMaker database and you have never done a compacted copy or a recover, consider it at some point. But it doesn't necessarily need to be regular or anything else at this point. I do compacted. And if I didn't have any evidence of any yeah. shenanigans, I wouldn't do the recovery. Because there is the outside chance that recovery could do some invasive sh you know. Yeah. It's like, you know. Somebody noted in Discord that it, it'll change your field type sometimes. Um, if it <laughs> finds something even a little bit off, 
like because FileMaker's default field type is a text thing, and so if it's like sees something wrong somewhere, it may flip the whole field to text. Yeah. Congrats, your number field is no longer. <laughs> right. So. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen that too much. We've seen it where. Yeah, normally what my experience is, and I've seen this for a lot of years, either it fixes it entirely or it doesn't fix it at all is generally my impression. Yeah. Um, I've seen specific issues with it, it generally being unable to correct, actually, like in the QuickBooks thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has trouble with calc fields, basically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, occasionally, what big, big, ugly custom functions, too. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll just... But that's you, you get down to the second recover, and it's got three things, and there are three things from the first list, and it's like two custom functions that are really yeah. hairy anyway. And it's yeah. like, okay, go rebuild it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> or do you even use them anymore? I mean, a lot of times you have an old that, database. It's like identifying stuff that you don't even use. Just delete it, save another compressed copy, run the recover again just to confirm engine room. Did you? Is it? I cleaned it up. Can you confirm the coffee spill has been cleaned up? Yes, good, got it done. All right. So, all right, so hopefully that helps all of you here. Uh, WJ, Michelle, Michael, all of you folks, the two robots that are on Twitch, all the folks on uh, uh, Discord and uh, YouTube. Appreciate everyone. It's really a great team that we have. Your contributions are awesome. We're going to miss uh, NJ uh, starting next week. Well, good luck with Australia and your different time zone. That's it for now. We'll catch you next week with uh, Nick Hunter doing some amazing stuff, I'm sure. Have a good one, folks. Thank you. See ya. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir! Oh,